O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Most sacred heart of Jesus, immaculate heart of Mary, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. One of the very first things that as Pope, Pope Francis did, in fact, on the morning after his election, he visited the Basilica of Santa Maria Maggiore, St. Mary Major, one of the four great basilicas of Rome, and he prayed there in front of the icon, the picture of Santa Maria Salus Populi Romani, Holy Mary, the health the saving health of the people of Rome. This ancient icon in the basilica, which the city has always looked to in both good times and in bad. Well, this is a good time because the Pope is beginning his ministry and he went there quite unannounced or informally as is his custom. Last Saturday, on the feast of St. Peter and St. Paul, the Pope issued his first encyclical letter, and it became public on Thursday, Thursday just gone. And as you might expect, in this year of faith proclaimed by his predecessor, the Pope Emeritus Benedict, and in fact, this first encyclical is Pope Francis's completion, one might say, of something that Pope Benedict himself began, the encyclical letter, this letter to the whole church, is on the subject of faith. And its title is Lumen Fide, the light of faith. Now, it's not a great long letter, but it has some very, very important points to make with regard to the nature of faith, the nature or the way in which we receive and the way in which we communicate our holy Catholic faith. And the Pope draws upon the great riches of the tradition of the Church. Beginning, of course, with the words of Scripture itself. Continuing with the Fathers, those great ancient writers of the Church. In fact, the first one he uh, quotes, in fact, is Saint Justin the Martyr. Justin was a convert from Judaism, and Justin wrote in the very earliest history of the church, just after the apostles, St. Justin wrote about the nature of faith, amongst other things. And right the way up until more recent times, he quotes blessed John Henry Newman, Cardinal Newman, our own Cardinal Newman, here in England. And he quotes his late and great predecessor but one, blessed, John, blessed Pope John Paul II, who, you may well have heard, yesterday Pope Francis has declared, will be made a saint, together with Pope John XXIII, blessed John XXIII. And that's something today to be especially thankful for. These two great popes, two of, not the only great popes, but two of the greatest popes of the 20th and in fact the 21st century because as you know blessed John Paul died in the year 2005. Now the reason I'm mentioning all of these things is to put into context what at the very end of the encyclical, the very end of the Pope's letter, he does as is customary and he speaks about our Blessed Lady having 
given this very profound teaching on the nature of faith, the way that it is received, the way that it is proclaimed and communicated, the way in which our world today, our world, which is so dark in many ways, needs above all, not money, not fame, not power, but the light of Jesus Christ. And then to conclude his teaching, the Pope focuses on the Mother of God. And he actually speaks, beginning his section on Our Lady, with the parable of the sower. These are the ones who, when they hear the word, hold it fast in an honest and good heart and bear fruit with patience, endurance. And the Pope says that in St. Luke's Gospel, this mention of the honest and good heart, ready to listen to the word of God, to keep it, and to do the word of God, this is, he says, a portrayal of the faith of the Virgin Mary. It is in Our Lady, he says, that we see above all how St. Luke, the Gospel writer, the evangelist, how he speaks of one who in St. Luke's Gospel is so prominent. We know St. Luke is the Gospel of the Annunciation, of the Visitation. St. Luke is the Gospel of the Presentation. How, the Pope says, she, Our Lady, treasured in her heart all that she had heard and seen, so that the word could bear fruit in her life. The mother of the Lord, the mother of our Saviour, is, Pope Francis says, the perfect icon, the perfect image of faith. And as Elizabeth, her kinswoman, at the moment of the visitation will say, blessed is she who believed. And so the Pope goes on to say that Our Lady, Mary, the daughter of Zion, that when we look at her, when we see her, we see fulfilled the whole history of faith from the Old Testament now opening out into the new. The Pope mentions some of those faithful women of the Old Testament, Sarah, for example. And these women, together with the fathers of our faith, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and so on, these were the ones in whom, the Pope says, God's promise was fulfilled and new life flowered. And yet wonderful as these women of the Old Testament are, it is only when the fullness of time comes that God speaks his word to Mary and she receives that word in her heart, in her whole being, the Pope says, so that in her womb that same word could take flesh and be born, be born as a light for humanity. Coming back to that theme of lumen fide, the light of faith. And the Pope again, as he did at the beginning of the encyclical quotes St. Justin, Justin the Martyr. Because Justin says that Our Lady, receiving the message of the angel, 
the message of Gabriel at the Annunciation, conceives in faith and joy. She conceives in faith and joy. And so it is that in the mother of Jesus, Our Lady, the mother of God, in her, Pope Francis says, faith demonstrates its fruitfulness. And he goes on to say that when our own spiritual lives, our life of prayer, of faithfulness to the Mass, to confession, which is available for you at this very moment in this church, when our own spiritual lives bear fruit, we become filled with joy. And this is the clearest sign, the Pope says, of the grandeur, the greatness of our faith. Our faith is not something which is to be buried away. It's not something which is to make us sad. Yes, there is sadness and sorrow, there is suffering in life. We know that only too well, in body, in mind, in all sorts of ways. But our faith is still a faith of joy. And in her own life, the Pope says, Our Lady completed the pilgrimage of faith, following in the footsteps of her divine Son. And in Mary, the journey of faith, which we see in the Old Testament, is now taken up into a following of Christ. It finds its natural fulfillment. That journey of faith by the Jewish people, our elder brothers and sisters, as Pope Francis has recently referred to them, that journey is now transformed by Christ, fulfilled by him. That journey enters, he says, into the gaze of the incarnate Son of God, God made man, Jesus Christ. So in Our Lady, the Pope says, we can see the believer who is completely taken up in her confession of faith. And because of her close bond with Jesus, the Pope says, Mary is very strictly, very tightly connected to what we believe. As Virgin and Mother, Mary offers us a clear sign of Christ's divine sonship. The eternal origin of our Lord Jesus Christ is in the Father. He is the Son in a unique sense. And he is born in time without the intervention of a man. We believe in the virgin birth. And Jesus, as the Son of God, brings to the world, Pope Francis says, a new beginning and a new light. The lumen fide, the fullness of God's love bestowed on man. And Our Lady's motherhood ensures for the Son of God a true and a real human history. Jesus Christ is truly man, as well as being truly God. True flesh, in which he would die on the cross and rise from the dead. And Our Lady, the Pope says, would accompany Jesus to the cross. That, in this church of Our Lady of Compassion, is what you see behind and above the altar, the image of the crucifixion. The compassionate mother, together with St. John, at the foot of the cross. And it is at the foot of the cross, the Pope says, from where her motherhood extends to each of his disciples. She will be present also 
in the upper room after the resurrection and ascension of our Lord, joining the apostles in imploring the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Pope is placing Our Lady within this Trinitarian relationship. Not because Our Lady, of course, is part of the Holy Trinity, but because she, like all of us, in the life of faith, is called to live the life of love, which is the triune God, the Blessed Trinity. The movement of love, the Pope says, between Father, Son, and Holy Spirit runs through our history, and Christ draws us to himself in order to save us. At the center of our faith is the confession of Jesus, the Son of God, born of a woman, who brings us, through the gift of the Holy Spirit, to adoption as sons and daughters. And the very last part of the encyclical letter is a prayer to our Blessed Lady, Mary, Mother of the Church and Mother of our Faith. The Pope prays, and so we pray, Mother, help our faith. Open our ears to God's word to recognize his voice and call. Awaken in us a desire to follow in his footsteps, to go forth from our own land and to receive his promise. Help us to be touched by his love, that we may touch him in faith. Help us to entrust ourselves fully to him and to believe in his love, especially at times of trial, beneath the shadow of the cross, when our faith is called to mature. So in our faith, the joy of the risen one, remind us that those who believe are never alone. Teach us to see all things with the eyes of Jesus, that he may be light for our path. And may this light of faith always increase in us until the dawn of that undying day in which Christ himself, your Son, is in which is Christ himself, your Son and our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.